OMG, hey! You read the title right, this is in fact the hair tutorial, but it's also a bit of an update video. Uh, I'm gonna make some tea. Why don't you all join me? So, I've started my portfolio program at my local art college, and uh, it's a hoot. I've been actually having a great time in life. My life's been going really great. So naturally, you know, um, as the as the life goes, uh, something terrible and distressing had to happen eventually. I'm not a pessimist, I swear. I, I'm just, you know, life would not be interesting without it boning you once in a while, okay? So I was just posting on my Instagram one day, you know, and it was, um, it, there was a gun in it, okay? There was a gun pointed at the camera, kind of like this. Like one of those, what's up? I'm a gangster, pop, pop, pop a cap in your ass. Anyway, um, so that didn't turn out very good. I think the guidelines, the uh, automatic bot might have seen that there was like a gun-shaped object in the shot somewhere, and uh, they took down my entire page. And so like if some of you are like trying to find my Instagram and you can't, that's that's where it is. It's It's gone, deactivated at least. Well, all right. Goes off in 2055. All right, so uh, naturally I w wanted to appeal. And so I did, after panicking a little bit. It's been like four days now. You guys like rooibos tea? Mm. It's just really fucking good. Sound off in the comments below what kind of tea you like. Cause uh, I will ridicule you endlessly if you like Earl Grey. Even though that's, you know, uh, people love that tea, and it's common that people love that tea, I think it smells and tastes really, really bad. So I have made another Instagram account to do commissions through, even though I don't get any, uh, and, you know, anything else. That sounded really bitter. <laughs> it wasn't that bitter. It's a little bitter, but mostly just because... Uh, my prices are really good and I'm good at what I do, so it makes me upset that people don't really want to commission me. But at the same time, I understand because Generation Z and Millennials, who take up most of my audience, they're really poor. You know, they can't afford to commission artists. I'll be um, posting my commission chart on my Instagram today. I'll put my Instagram in the description below. Um, but yeah, so today we're mostly just going to talk about how to draw hair. I think that afro curly hair, like hair that just goes up and out, is the most challenging to draw. It's complicated, it's really thick, it's very, it's very diverse. With, within the curls, there's, there's usually multiple types of curls on one head. Everybody's way of drawing curls is very different. But they all read as curls. So I'll show you guys what I do to sort of make it easy and also kind of convincing. So yeah, we'll do, we'll do all hair types today. Thanks for coming over and uh, making tea with me. You guys are great company. I love you guys. So first off, you gotta draw the head first. If you're drawing hair first, then you're going to be having a really rough time with proportions. There's paint on my hands, get used to it. Um, so basically, it always sort of looks like an egg. One of those ha half long, half short, or no, like half, half short, half really short. So basically, you, you wanna make the large pieces of the hair first. And uh, for short hair, it would meet around uh, where the ears are. And the ears are a little bit below the half mark. So the proportions of the face do come in um, to play when you're figuring out the hair because of the hairline as well. The hairline usually comes up around here. It can come down almost uh, halfway down the forehead line because uh, the forehead will take up half of the face. The rest of the face all happens down here. 
So if you have like stuff going on in the top half of your head, you can do that, but it just won't look as realistic. Obviously, eyebrows don't really don't really count unless you're going for something really realistic, but we're not we're not going for some some true realism today. Proportionate doesn't mean realistic proportions. It means that the drawing inside of itself makes sense. So that's what we're going to do today. All right, so let's do um let's do a bob because I do lots of bobs. Let's just do um, a plumper little face here. And so you'd have the eyes right here. I'm not gonna do any complicated faces today. And uh, then you just sort of, bangs can vary. So, and uh, usually they will have a, a cowlick that sort of splits them in a certain place. And if you wanna make a character recognizable, cowlicks are a great way to do that. I've got one on one side of my head, as you probably saw at the beginning of the video. It always kind of makes itself known. So she's got one sort of closer to the middle. And uh, remember to give it a good amount of space right here. Because if it's down flat against the head, it'll look like your character is drenched in water. That's pretty much the only time that your hair is flat against your head. The second that it's dry, it gets a little bit of bounce, it gets a little bit of volume. You can give somebody a lot of volume and make it look like they put style gel in their hair. You know, like, pretty much you want to stick away from that unless you're going for the came out of the shower look. Ooh, so sexy. Alright, so bobs are usually going out because the ends of the hair are thicker than the tops of the hair. The tops of the hair are a little bit heavier because they're more oily. Um, they have more of the oil from the scalp coming down. So it usually goes out like this. Um, or for other reasons, it could be as well like um, the thickness of your hair. If your hair is really thick, it will, it will want to go into waves. And uh, if you cut that hair short, it'll just sort of go out because it's not long enough to have any um, any wavy thing going on. You can tell I haven't really put in any s specific strands of hair. I'm still just blocking in the little pieces and bangs would never just be one piece unless she had just come out of the hairstylist. We're trying to make it look a little bit natural. Like she had a shower this morning and then brushed it out. Like that's pretty much all she did to her hair. So you see I've brought this up a little bit to show that this one's coming away from this one. Less detail in the back because, well, usually I would actually hatch hatch the back because hatchback. <laughs> um, no, I would usually just do a little bit of hatching so that you can see the depth. And uh, shading doesn't have to be super dark or anything like that for you to notice that there is a change in depth. And sometimes when it comes to short hair, the hair that's shorter, which would be on the sides and the back, is actually darker because, and this is something that my art teacher actually said to me today, but I already knew it. I, I would just, uh, she was confirming my, uh, my suspicions that the hair closer to your roots, and this might also be because of the oil, is a, it's a bit darker than the hair that, that is longer. See, this, this guy's got a shorter haircut than me, but it is swept to one side. So you want to keep that motion. It goes up here because it's being combed thoroughly by his fingers every 25 seconds. <laughs> you guys all know that guy that I'm talking about. He definitely exists in all of your lives. Um, but yeah, so he's, he's constantly combing through his hair, which means that it would all go to the side. But it's, it's not as thick as hers, so it kind of curls inwards. And sometimes that can happen with uh, bobs too. So if if it was me, for example, I've got really thin hair. Let's give this girl some shorter bobs, actually. Uh, shorter bangs. If it was me, uh, it would usually just curl inwards on one side and then outwards on another, but sometimes it curls inward on both sides if it's fairly thin and fine. And thin hair doesn't have to be... Um, but thick hair doesn't have to be like very voluminous. Like, it just sort of depends on how much hair you've got. 
So then I would just sort of cut across the bottom to create that mass. It's a bit like more like it exists. It's parted in the middle, so I would give that a little bit of bounce. Because, you know, and you know, you always have like the stray hair. Sometimes it's nice to put in that stray hair. Um, not because it would be not because it would be totally obvious if you were no, that's too high if you were trying to create like a cartoony style, but also because it gives that character a bit more personality. Like um, like she just scratched that side of her head. <laughs> um, now let's move on to wavy hair. Got these beautiful short bobs, and now we're gonna go long. We're we can also take a look at wavy hair cut close to the head. Let's let's do that first. So this little fella, I gave him a chin. I gave him a chin so that he could grin. <laughs> you, guys, you like my rhyme, guys? Okay. So let's just do parted in the middle. I've got a character with wavy hair parted in the middle. So what you want to do is just back and forth very gently and um, keeping the same rhythm, but then like after a little while it starts to change within itself. And that's how you kind of give it that. Sometimes wavy hair can get a little bit more curly at the ends. Do a little bit of that too. This is definitely a uh, more curly, but when, uh, when guys with curly hair have their hair short, it usually, the curls are tighter, and then it grows out, and their curls get a lot looser. So his hair is sort of in between. It's, it's a little wavy, it's a little curly. Wow. And uh, the thing about curly hair is this. This, this is very important, because it shows that a curl is coming out away from the other hair mass, but is going back in and disappearing into the mass. So creating this little uh, pocket of negative space, negative space being whatever is behind the subject, um, it makes it have sort of some little bit of personality. You see it a lot in um, modern anime, like a lot of anime that comes out these days, they'll have these little pockets of negative space at the edges of the hair. And I think it's a great technique. So we're going to keep using it. <laughs> and I will never stop. So... What's next? We're gonna do somebody with long wavy hair, like Arya, one of my oldest characters. I can't believe it's been five years since I decided to make my first OC. Five years of, uh, of Arya. Yeah, Arya is my first OC. Well, she's not my first OC. She's my first OC that I repeatedly made content about. I, I've had like characters in books and comic books before. See, Arya's got wavy bangs. So they look a little different than these ones. There's no straight end. They come up a lot a lot higher because her hair is sort of defiant. And uh, to sort of make it look more balanced, she has gone in and left some longer strands on the sides. I don't write scripts for this shit, guys. See, look, add it in wherever you want. Wherever there's enough space, put it in. So I just, I got carried away with that face. So let's just go back to the hair. So um, you wanna make it look like, it sort of looks like it's parted in the middle. Oh. This is character specific, but I, I'm gonna put her horns in really fast. So since her hair is longer, the waves, they're farther apart. They still um, tend to go along with each other, but we want to create some strays as well, which is what this is. And then some coming over her shoulder, so it gets it gets brought up here. And then comes curling back around, bouncing off of her shoulder. Loose them on the other side as well. Just have fun with this because curly hair is like making waves, you know? Like, the less organized it looks, the more realistic it looks. Yeah. Or ripples. Or freckles, you know? Random. Just be random. 
And uh, yeah, you can just sort of hash in the, the space where her hair just sort of disappears into the mess of hair. And that's your wavy, your wavy hair. All right, we have time for one more hair type. We're going for curly hair. Who better to show us how to do curly hair than my man Jean? We're starting to draw my characters, so we might as well, eh? Um, in my last draw with me, my only draw with me, I uh, parted his hair in the middle, and I have since gone back because I actually preferred his little, his little broccoli sort of thing where it's just all going up. It's more like I don't know. It's more his style. I think he's more of a cool boy. He's not an e boy. His hair. It's just like making a cloud, and then I'll make these little holes at the at the top where the cloud parts are and those are the end of the ringlet so like if I were to draw a ringlet up close you know there's a ringlet it's got some sort of hole at the end that makes uh, that's a little darker because it, it's sort of yeah it's a ring it's a it's a coil so there's an entryway. So that's what I do here. It kind of looks a little bit like a, a sort of an undersea plant. So then you go back in and you kind of separate them so that there's more of a situation going on here. And you just sort of shade it in. That's what I do for, and then I'll just add a few more in, why not? Because they're not always the same length. And if he's far away, I wouldn't probably add this much. I would just leave the cloud looking thing. Like if it's just a little tiny little thumbnail sketch. Because honestly, like, if I were to do a thumbnail sketch of this hair, it would take me two seconds as well. Like, there is simplified ways. She's just got this straight ass bob. And, uh,. So let's do some long curly hair. Like, I'm just gonna make up a character. Let's uh, let's part it in the middle. So when you part something in the middle, it goes out like this, and you wanna you wanna account for that Cupid's bow again. And uh, then you wanna create like that gap where the Cupid's bow is being shown. Then the rest of it comes down off the sides. She's got lots and lots of hair. Sort of creating the boundary for the, uh, you know, you can separate it into the groups where it's like the front hair, which is coming down here, which usually is um, right by her ear, like right um, on the side of her head. So that's why it usually comes over the shoulders. And then her back hair, which is protruding only because her hair is, is so damn thick. So then you can go in and just sort of curl it around. I like doing like little swirls as well, because that also like successfully shows you that there's curls going on. And then you can like leave a space here so to show that it's not only is it curly, it's it's shiny too. And that reminds me, let's get into some shading, why don't we? Because these are flat. And you can get pretty in, you can get pretty freaking adventurous with a graphite pencil and uh, and a little bit of a little bit of faith. So let's just uh, take a profile shot. That's not bad. Guys, I'm like literally pleased by a profile drawing. I've never been actually pleased by a profile. Junji Ito, I've been studying Junji Ito. Please look up Junji Ito if you like horror manga because you guys probably are, already even know who this dude is. But like, he, his fucking art is fantastic. Look at this influence, he's already influenced me. Um, Stevie, let's make this Stevie. Stevie's got a really angular face. She's got 
kind of thick and wavy hair as well. So that's why her bangs don't really look very straight, like uh, Tret's would or Tam's would. So then we have the front hair. Oops, kind of got in the way of her freckles there. And uh, it's going to be just sort of going that direction. She's got her hair in a ponytail as usual. I don't know why I suck at drawing ears right now, but <laughs> that's how it be. Her chin is too big. So then you've got your freaking head shape. This is her skull, if you couldn't tell. Um, and it's not working for me, okay. I just got done doing portraits, so I'm being like really nitpicky, even though my style is not necessarily as realistic as my classwork, so I should just lay off. Let's just move on to the hair. <laughs> so what I'm trying to show you guys here is that you can use cartoony techniques and create something that still looks like very cohesive, like you've like you've worked on anatomy. It's like uh, comprehensive, comprehensive, cohesive. They mean the same thing. And here's how. We've got three to four different hair parts in this. In, um, in Procreate, I would do them all on the same layer. And because, uh, you know, it's all like the same thing, even though it's going in multiple different directions. So her hair is actually really light and I wouldn't shade it that darkly. So, but I do want to pay attention to the dark, darkest parts and I want to pay attention to the light source. This one is coming off above, it's, it's going on above her. So it's an overhead light. So she would have a little bit of shine here, just a bit. She would have some shine on her bangs. It's usually right around the place where their hair is going down. So there's a little bit of that upward, and then the second you feel that it's starting to really descend, that is the place where the highlight goes. That's a little cheat. I was also taught that today. That one I actually didn't know. <laughs> but it makes a lot of sense when you think about it. I was just sort of doing it... Um, with my gut, like a lot of stuff I do is just with my gut. Follow your gut, guys. Your gut is usually right. You know, oh, I don't know how I feel about this person. They give me a weird vibe. You're, you're probably right. Or you have trust issues, but you're probably right. So then you leave a little bit of light up here, even though it's uh, the highlight is going in a different direction than it is here. And then you go in at the corners, darken it, so that you can see the highlight better. Darken it. Yeah, you can see it. Do that a little bit up here. And then we wanna make it nice and dark down here so that you know the light is nowhere to be found in this, in this general area. You're starting to really see the source of light even though it's not drawn. It's literally just implied by the highlights in her hair. And then we're moving on to this one. So yeah, you just, you place it around, around here. And sometimes when it comes to a long, long chunk of hair or fabric or metal or anything, um, there can be multiple highlights from basically implying that there isn't just one light source in the room. And maybe somewhere very far away, there is a light that is coming from the side. Maybe that's why that's there. So you want to line these up just a tiny bit. And then just ever so gently define the highlight up here as well. Maybe, maybe the ones on, on the top should be a tiny bit less defined because her hair itself is in brighter light. So the ones down here will be a little bit darker. 
yeah so oh and this is like where the ponytail is coming off of her head so you want to make this nice and dark probably the darkest point would be here and here and there you've got brunette stevie <laughs> she doesn't this makes her hair look really dark but she's not she's not this the blondest girl on the beach so maybe maybe this is slightly realistic shade in that ear because that goes on forever that goes all the way to her brain and uh since we're getting nice and detailed let's let's just do the the rest of the bust shall we She's wearing a tank top, because I'm lazy. And uh, let's give her some lips. She's got some, some nice lips. There you go. I think that's it for today. One more thing. Stay in school. Tell your mom you love her. And tell me you love me. Because I will eventually be a mom one day. Think about it like that. Yeah. You insensitive prick.